Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service for Trinity Sunday 2021. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There are two Bible passages that are the basis of this morning's meditation. First is the Old Testament lesson, Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, your sin atoned for. And then, the other portion of our text for today, from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the more popular children and teenage reading series is called The Hardy Boys. It was very popular when I was growing up. It's a mystery series about two fictitious boys, brothers named Frank and Joe Hardy. They played the part of detectives. They took on cases that would confound even the best detective minds of their day and age. It was a series typical of any mystery series or book. Something would be difficult to explain, or a case would be impossible to crack, and then they would eventually, by the end of the book, find the answer. Different mysteries, different answers. All coming to a conclusion as the book would conclude. Life itself is filled with mysteries. Things that are difficult to understand and difficult to comprehend. And sometimes these mysteries are just unexplainable. But they still remain true. For example, there's something called quantum superposition. Scientists at Stanford University in California, has to, they've discovered that one atom can be found simultaneously in two different places, even connected miles apart. Albert Einstein called this finding spooky action. Sounds strange? Well, indeed, it's beyond our imagination. Science has shown that when something travels extremely fast in relation to another thing, time actually slows down for the speedy thing. We're not talking about clocks, but we're also talking about time itself. Sounds strange? Well, indeed it is. It's beyond our imagination. It's beyond our comprehension. So, too, on this Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the mystery of the Trinity. The triune God is incomprehensible. There are many things that we cannot understand. We just are called to trust and believe. Holy Scripture, not science, reveals that there is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's one God, not three gods, one being, not three beings, one essence, not three essences. The scriptures reveal that this fact is true. It's beyond our comprehension, beyond our imagination. Three distinct persons, each person different from the other two, yet each person being 100% God. Just as the Trinity is a mystery and incomprehensible, so too is the love of God. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, the mystery of God's love for us. God doesn't want us necessarily to understand the mysteries of God, nor does he want to understand the mysteries of his love. He just wants us to believe in that mystery and take him at his word. Now, our Old Testament lesson for today, which serves as the basis of our text, takes place during the time of King Uzziah of Judah. 
the prophet Isaiah enters the temple, and behold, he sees this magnificent vision of the Lord. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two that covered their face, with two that covered their feet, and with two they flew. And the seraphim says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, Isaiah stands here in the temple, and he sees this beautiful, magnificent vision of God. The very foundation in which he was standing shook at the voice of God. He really, truly had the fear of God placed in his heart and in his life. That's why Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I'm lost. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah, when he is confronted with the living Lord God, comes to his senses and realizes that he's a poor, miserable sinner. And he says, I'm as dead meat. I'm a dead man walking. I can't comprehend the mercy of God. I deserve nothing but sin and death. But note God's grace and mercy. God doesn't wish to destroy sinners. He wishes to save sinners. And that's why he wants Isaiah to be his friend. Notice what happens. The seraphim fly to him. With a burning coal that's been taken from the tongs of the altar, the angel of his mouth says, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, your sin is atoned for. God isn't going to destroy Isaiah in the temple. He's going to save Isaiah. Why? Because God loves Isaiah. And so he saves him, forgiving him of all of his sins, so that Isaiah might serve the Lord now with joy. You and I are just like Isaiah. We have sinned before the Lord. None of us is perfect. All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. We're right when we say in our common confession that we're poor, miserable, sinful beings. We are by nature sinful and unclean. We deserve no good thing from God. God has every right to destroy us, each and every one of us, but he's good and gracious, giving us what we don't deserve. He gives us his grace and every blessing. He forgives us our sins, gives us eternal life. So how do we show our appreciation and thanks? Well, we certainly don't love God the way God calls us to. God wants us to love him from, from our heart, to have our priorities straight, to love the Lord our God, all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. However, we love other things more than God. Our hopes and dreams get in the way of the plans God has for us. We take God's name in vain. We curse we swear, we fa fail to continuously uphold God's word in our heart, in our lives, and live by it. We don't love God the way he wants us to. We love others more than we love ourselves. We fail to listen to those around us to hear their cries of need and help. We ignore their cries of despair. God has every right to condemn us, to damn us for all that we are because we are poor, miserable sinners. But great is the mystery of God's love. He doesn't wish to destroy us, he wishes to save us. And that's why there's this second passage of our text for today. The gospel in the nutshell, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, so that all who believe in Jesus will not perish but have eternal life. And the Bible goes on to say, for, the, for, for Jesus came into the world, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Jesus. This is the will of God, that God wants all people to be saved and come believe in Jesus, because God loves the sinner. And that's a great mystery. But it's a wonderful mystery, that God the Father loves us. He loves you. And in love, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be your savior. God loves you and he continues to love you and nothing will separate you from that love. That's why God the Father sent his son, Jesus, to earth to do his work of seeking and saving the lost. And Jesus kept on task, doing what was necessary for your salvation. He kept the law, God's law, perfectly in his life, never sinning, and then offering himself up on the cross as a full and complete payment for all of our sins. That's why Jesus says it is finished. 
All sins and transgressions have been paid for. Jesus never made life about himself. He never made the issue about himself. He simply states that he was sent by God to do the will of his Father. He doesn't sensationalize his life or work. He testifies to the truth. He says, my will is to do the will of him who sent me. That's why Jesus said that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus proclaimed that his purpose in his life and in his ministry was to do the will of the Heavenly Father who sent him into the world to save sinners. Salvation is a free gift of God, and it's yours today as a free gift. For you've been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not of your own doing. It's a gift of God. And this gift, this faith, is given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. He gives you faith in Jesus, in the waters of your baptism. He speaks to you today through this word to strengthen your faith. He's at work in the Lord's Supper to strengthen your faith and to keep you in the faith. You become a new person in Jesus, all because of God's love for you. He created you, He redeemed you, and He makes you holy by the power of His Holy Spirit, working through word and sacrament. The work of the Holy Spirit is to help us believe in Jesus by giving us faith in Jesus. The work of the Holy Spirit is to show us our sins so that we can see a need for a Savior, and then by giving us faith to receive the gift of the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one who witnesses to you and to the world that the only hope of salvation is to believe in Jesus, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit works by means of His Word, the Word of God. Where the Word of God is proclaimed, the Spirit points to Jesus. The Father points you to Jesus. The Spirit points you to Jesus, because there is no other name under heaven whereby we may be saved, except by believing in Jesus. You see, dear friend, the good news is this. God has made you His child in Jesus Christ. God the Father has created you. God sent His only Son, Jesus, to save you in His suffering, death, and resurrection. And God the Holy Spirit has saved you so that you might believe in Jesus and live as His child. God has done it all. And today, on this Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the mystery of God's love for us in Jesus. And because of his love, you and I can look forward to the days ahead, knowing that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will live with the Lord forever. To the glory of God, and in Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep both your hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. We thank you for joining us for this abbreviated worship service from Redeemer Lutheran Church. We're located at 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio. If you have no church home, we invite you to join us and make Redeemer your church home. We'd be happy to have you as a part of our family. We worship every Sunday at 1015. And we'd like to remind you that church is open and members are certainly welcome, visitors are certainly welcome, and we're expected to worship the Lord. Now, the Lord says, don't forsake the assembly of the saints. And so we invite you to come worship with the Lord here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. And if you'd like to support this ministry with your tithes and offerings, we invite you to do so by sending your tithes and offerings to Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio. The zip code is 43130. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.